buildings and structures, and their value is placed at $146 billion. 4,564 military facilities are located in the domestic United States. These official numbers are quite misleading, however, as to the scale of overseas basing uh, because they exclude the massive buildup of new bases and troop presence in Iraq and Afghanistan, as well as unacknowledged facilities in places like Israel, Kuwait, the Philippines, and many other places. $2 billion in military construction money has just been expended in only three years of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. Uh, just one facility in Iraq, Balad Air Base, houses 30,000 troops. Um, some of you in the audience may even have seen it um, already um, in, during your, your tour of duty. Um, 10,000 contractors are housed there, and it extends across 16 square miles with an additional 12 square mile security perimeter. These facilities include sprawling army bases with airfields and McDonald's and high schools and small listening posts. They include artillery testing ranges and berthed aircraft carriers. While the bases are literally, uh, they consist of barracks and weapons depots and staging areas for war making, uh, they also include golf courses and basketball courts. Um, and they are also, however, not just those physical um, facilities, but they're also political claims, I would argue. They are the spoils of war. They are, in some cases, arms sales showrooms, uh, as uh, the militaries of other countries who, um, who uh, are allies of the United States uh, see the, the, the military equipment of, of the US um, on display in various ways. Um, they're also toxic industrial sites. Um, obviously, there's a lot of attempt to control that, uh, the toxic flows, but it's, it, modern military operations of the US or any country are, are massively um, industrial and, and can be quite toxic. Um, bases are also laboratories for cultural miscommunication, and they're collections of customers for, cus for local bars, shops, and prostitution. The environmental, political, and economic impact of these bases is enormous as you well know. While some people benefit from the coming of a base, at least temporarily, most communities and many within them pay a high price. Their farmland taken for bases, their bodies attacked by cancers and neurological disorders because of military toxic exposures, their neighbors imprisoned, tortured, and disappeared by the autocratic regimes that have sometimes survived on US military and political support, given as a form of tacit rent for the bases. Military bases should also include uh, the 11 U.S. aircraft carriers, as, as the U.S. Navy refers to each as four and a half acres of sovereign U.S. territory. These are sort of movable bases. The picture of military access also includes U.S. military training of foreign forces, uh, joint exercises meant to enhance U.S. soldiers' exposure to a variety of operating environments, and legal arrangements made to gain overflight rights and other forms of ad hoc use of, of territory as well as to pre-position military equipment. In all of these realms, the US is in a class by itself, no adversary or ally maintaining anything comparable in terms of its scope, depth, and global reach. These three elements come with problems. The training programs sometimes have strengthened the power of military forces in relation to other sectors within those countries, sometimes with fragile democracies. Fully 38% of those countries with U.S. basing were cited in 2002 for their poor human rights records. The exercises have sometimes been provocative to other nations, and in some cases have become the pretext for substantial and permanent positioning of troops. In recent years, for example, uh, the United States has run approximately 20 ex exercises annually on Philippine soil. Given the sensitivity about sovereignty or the costs of having the US in their country, um, and again, imagine the Chinese attempting to uh, negotiate or the, even the French attempting to negotiate a, uh, a military base on US soil. Um, and one can imagine the sensitivities. There are elaborate bilateral negotiations that end up exchanging weapons, cash, and trade privileges for land use rights and overflight. Less explicitly, but no less importantly, rice import levels or immigration rights to the US or overlooking human rights abuses have been the currency of exchange for base rights. Bases are the literal and symbolic anchors and the most visible centerpieces of the US military presence overseas. To understand where those bases are and how they are being used is essential for understanding the United States' relationship with the rest of the world, the role of military coercion or the threat of coercion in it, and its political economic complexion. 
Okay, let me give you a couple of other examples of, uh, well, first of all, starting with Guam. Um, as you all know, um, you have uh, almost a third of your land area in U.S. military basing. Okinawa is in a somewhat similar situation, uh, the, the closest parallel to Guam in many ways, and I know you've had a lot of uh, people coming back and forth and discussing that because of that similarity. Um, but areas in the domestic in the United States also have, of course, many military bases. North Carolina is considered one of the most uh, military um, impacted of the states, uh, but it, in fact, of course, it has, uh, uh, again, its, its impact is minuscule compared with, with Guam. Uh, Fort Bragg is, a, is a, a very large base here that, uh, that I worked on, uh, and in the city of Fayetteville right next to it, um, that's one of the largest bases in the states, but again, it, it, again proportionally, it just, nothing really quite compares. Okay. Um, let me also just point out that the, the way in which bases have, uh, have emerged over time, the, the history of that basing is, is very significant. When one wants to understand why the bases are in Guam, why the bases are in Kuwait, why bases are anywhere around the world, each of those bases has a very a distinctive history, but they share some things in common. But let me first ask, what, what are bases for? Um, foreign military bases have been established throughout the history of expanding states and warfare. They proliferate where a state has imperial ambitions, even though uh, either through direct control of territory or through indirect control over the political economy, laws, and foreign policy of other places. Whether or not it recognizes itself as such, a country can be called an empire when it projects power, substantial power, with the aim of asserting and maintaining dominance over other regions, regions far from itself. Those policies succeed when wealth is extracted from peripheral areas and redistributed to the imperial center. That's the historical uh, and social science definition of empire. Empires that have historically been associated with a growing gap between the wealth and, wel the wealth and welfare of the powerful center and the regions that it dominates. Alongside and supporting these goals has often been elevated self-regard in the imperial power or a sense of racial, cultural, or social superiority. So when the British uh, controlled India. Um, again, it, it benefited uh, economically when uh, it, it British, the British talked about their relationship to the Indians. It was often, again, with uh, a strong sort of sense of, of, of cultural superiority. The descriptors empire and imperialism have been applied to the Romans, the Incans, the Mongols, the Persians, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the Ottoman, the Dutch, the British, the Soviet Union, China, Japan, and the United States among others, right? So there have been a long, uh, there's a long list of, of people who, of, of states that have, um, again, tried try to uh, exert imperial control. Despite the striking differences between each of these cases, each of them used military bases to maintain some form of rule over regions far from their center. The bases eroded the sovereignty of allied states on which they were established by treaty. The Roman Empire, for example, was established not only by conquest, but also by uh, taking her weaker but still sovereign neighbors under her wing and protecting them against her and their stronger neighbors. Uh, the most that Rome asked of them in terms of territory was a cessation here and there of a patch of ground for the plantation of a Roman base. What have military bases accomplished for these empires through history? Bases are usually presented above all as having rational, strategic purposes. The empire claims that they provide forward defense for the homeland, supply other nations with security, and facilitate the control of trade routes and resources. 